Hello and welcome back in to End on a Make. Uh, it took a little bit of time off because the last video I made, I got on here and I sat down and I said, man, the Clippers look like they're going to have to blow it up. They're about to get bounced in the first round again. And meanwhile, my Lakers are figuring it out. They're getting healthy. League's in trouble. Run it back. <laughs> um, obviously, that was not how it went. The Clippers came two games short of making the NBA Finals, and the Lakers got bounced in the first round. Uh, so it took a little bit of time off. Um, kind of, kind of, you know, hide away, shield myself from from being so wrong. The you know, old takes exposed, freezing cold takes, that type of stuff. Uh, but now we have an NBA Finals matchup: the Milwaukee Bucks uh, clinch. The birth, the first one since I want to say 1974, where they will be taking on the Phoenix Suns. Now, the Bucks won in six. They ended up eliminating the Hawks in Atlanta with no Giannis. Uh, huge games from Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday like there needed to be. But also, the last couple games, some key contributions from dudes like Bobby Portis and Brooke Lopez, who looks like he's like steps straight out of a time machine and he's like brooklyn brook lopez again like it's it's wild to see how dominant he has been at attacking you know the hawks inside and like not just settling for those outside shots like he has been for so long so this finals matchup i was talking to a friend of mine after it became official and i said you know the league might not be like super happy because this isn't going to be like the scoring of a Suns Hawks final series, like what that could have been, where you have, you know, maybe 120 plus points a game on both sides. The Bucks, it they're gonna be a far more defensive team. And, you know, that's gonna probably make for a better matchup stylistically. But ratings wise, I think that it probably would have been better for, you know, the casual fan if it was those two high high tempo, fast paced teams with young stars that can just score in in volumes, just get buckets. But I think the matchup we got ended up being the right one. The Milwaukee Bucks have been a really dominant team as far as regular seasons go the last couple of years. And adding Drew Holiday and some of the moves that they made this offseason, grabbing P.J. Tucker at the deadline, stuff like that really, really has kind of given a nice depth. So... Obviously, first and foremost, when it comes to the series, it's going to come down to how healthy is Giannis. He has that hyperextended knee that looked a lot worse than it turned out being uh, in game, I want to say game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. And now he's apparently going to be day to day. But uh, Coach Bud said he's going to basically have to go through the entire town of Milwaukee if he wants to play. It's going to be, the, you know, team doctors, his doctors, his team. It's just everybody is going to have to sign off on it and they're going to have to weigh all the risks because, you know, obviously he is the franchise. You just signed him into that long extension. And yes, going and winning a title, you know, would be incredible. But if it's going to compromise his long term health, that's a tough, tough spot to be in, especially for a competitor of, of Giannis's caliber, a, a competitor that wants to win and wants to, you know, be that guy. Um on the flip side, Phoenix has been really healthy. They had the uh, the health scare with Chris Paul, and then like Cam Johnson, I guess, had a stomach bug that kept him out of Game Six against the Clippers. But other than that, and other than Patrick Beverly headbutting Devin Booker in the face and breaking his nose eighteen different places, they've been pretty healthy. And this this extended time off before the final starts Tuesday for them is probably going to help Booker a little bit more. He started playing a little bit more like himself, even though he has to. He had to keep the mask on. Um, and this is just this is going to be one of those finals where, you know, you could tell me anything right now. And I would probably, you know, I could see the road to it happening. I could see a buck sweep. I could see a sun sweep. I could see a seven game. I could see, you know, I could see any combination of things because this is a this is a matchup that goes really closely. And the Suns won uh, both games that they played this season against the Bucks in the regular season. But. They won by a combined two points total. One was a miraculous comeback and Devin Booker free throws at the end. And these games got close. And one of them, Drew Holiday, didn't even play for the Bucks. So 
it's going to be really interesting to see because I can guess that he's probably going to be the one guarding Chris Paul because I think if you shut Chris Paul down, you kind of like really take away a lot of what makes that Suns offense so potent with like DeAndre Ayton and with uh, Paul's ability to hit the open open man for those open shots and Paul being able to, you know, just get wherever he wants in the mid range. Like I think Drew Holiday is going to make that a lot harder for him. And if he can't get those passing lanes off to where he's hitting, you know, Aiton in the pick and roll or he's hitting, you know, Cam Johnson or or Mikhail Bridges or someone on the outside, it's going to be a lot harder. And it's going to force the Suns to be a lot of one on one, create your own shot players. And Devin Booker can do that. I'm sure that Chris Middleton will probably start on him. But it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, how exactly they decide to attack that Suns offense. Because that Suns offense, when it's rolling, can just absolutely avalanche teams. And it has been. Uh, defensively, they always seem to be able to let a team back in. So I wouldn't say the Bucks are ever going to be truly out. Because, you know, they're always just going to be a runaway. And they have the weapons, especially with healthy Giannis. And it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those matchups. It's gonna be interesting to see how they do. It. I want to see who they put Giannis on. If Giannis is gonna go small, uh, small ball center and guard Aiton more, or if they're gonna try to just do a straight up Lopez on Aiton for a majority of the game. Like that's the the other thing is the flexibility that Phoenix's small lineups give them. The the Bucks would probably have to commit to playing someone like Giannis at the five, or maybe you know extended minutes for Bobby Portis. But with how good Lopez has been playing, it's going to be tough. Like, And this is something that I think gives Phoenix an advantage here. I think that, you know, we can count on Monty Williams, coach of the year, Monty Williams, to make adjustments and catch these things and adjust in-game. Whereas, like, Coach Bud, maybe he makes the adjustment, maybe he doesn't. I mean, neither would really surprise me. And that's crazy to say about a head coach in the NBA Finals, but... I saw people, Bucks fans yesterday were like, yeah, I'm glad we made the finals, but if this means we're stuck with Coach Bud, like, this sucks. And that's crazy. That's your first finals in, you know, 40 years, 45 years as a franchise, and you're still like, well, damn it, if this locks us into this coach, then this is a net negative. And, <laughs> and that's crazy. I can't think of another coach that could be in the NBA finals, could potentially win a title, and would still you know, be on the hot seat because I wouldn't say that they won those games against the Hawks because of adjustments, because of incredible coaching changes. I think it's a matter of the talent of the team and then getting more minutes for those dudes like Portis and then Lopez turning back the clock. You know, I don't think Bud had a time machine that he put Brooke Lopez in and said, hey, go get go get your Brooklyn self. Like, it's just, it's really interesting. Um I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. The, oh, the other thing is both of these teams being, you know, smaller market teams, I think is awesome. I think this is a good, good thing for league parity. I think that this is good for, you know, those small market teams that might be worried about keeping superstars. I think seeing that these teams, you know, with, with one superstar and, and good drafting and smart trading and free agency and stuff like that, like being able to make those right moves puts you in this position like the Suns were a terrible team two years ago they have the good bubble last year and now here they are four wins away from a title and like a pretty quick rebuild that's a pretty quick rebuild on the fly so like teams like Oklahoma City and Detroit Orlando those guys have to be thinking like okay well we have to nail these drafts we have to make sure we can find like good complimentary free agents and then you can't be afraid to trade like Taking a chance on Chris Paul after how good he was in Oklahoma City, like, you never know with an with an aging point guard. And everyone likes to say, you know, he's undersized, so that puts him at even more risk for, for breaking down quickly and becoming more of a liability quicker. And instead, it's, it's paid ultimate dividends. It's, you know, this was a team that was – they knew where they were, they knew what they needed, and they went out and got the exact person they needed. And you see what an impact even one player can have. So I'll be really curious to see how this type of, you know, this type of finals matchup influences the decision making around the rest of the league and the rest of those small market teams in particular. 
uh, in particular, probably Detroit and Oklahoma City are the two, just because, you know, Detroit has the number one pick and because Oklahoma City has like 39 picks over the next five or six years. So it's going to be cool to watch. I'm really excited for these finals. Um, as for, like, who to pick, I really don't know. I'm leaning, I think, Suns in, like, six or seven because I think the offensive firepower of the Suns will be too much for the Bucks to match, especially if Giannis isn't playing or is playing at, like, 80%. Uh, but, like I said, this is one of those that's going to probably change game by game. Uh, if you have if you have thoughts on the finals, if you have matchup thoughts or something that you're excited to see between the two of these teams, please let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this series, on the, the playoffs in general. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts, and I will be back soon.